Okay, thanks, Marcia. Yeah, so the, the broad goal of our plan is really to build a better sense of community. I've heard um, this sense of community mentioned several times and we identified that as a, a weakness in our program. Our program is a multi-departmental program, the biology graduate program, um, and that presents um, some hurdles as well as people being dispersed among buildings um, in addition to different departments. Um, but within this idea of a, a sense of community, it's really getting the graduate students, graduate students and faculty to communicate more about diversity, inclusivity issues, as well as um, building mentoring skills um, of the faculty in that. And so a number of the things that we've done, you can go to the next slide. I'll just share with you some of those. There's a number of uh, things that we were already doing um, that we believe will contribute to the enhancing the success of URM students. Um, the LSAMP targeted opportunity hires to increase diversity exit interviews that we use that feedback um, <clears throat> um, to improve the program and then tracking the students. We have a graduate handbook that has information in it um, and then faculty and graduate mentoring of undergraduate students. Um, and then all the graduate students complete an annual progress report. And then some of the other things, uh, one of those was mentioned, was that starting in fall 2019, we started a uh, mentor-mentee uh, communication module in our graduate core course that all the incoming graduate students take. Um, and I don't have a time to go into the details of that, but that came out of a, a talk, an AGEP talk by Sharon Melgram at NIH um, that basically is meant to break down some of the barriers um, real and perceived that exist between uh, mentors and mentees that um, uh, really inhibit their success and they can be particularly acute uh, barriers uh, for URM students. And then we adopted, we have all of our um, graduate students now create an individual development plan that they share with their mentor. Um, sometimes the mentor has a particular idea of what the student's career goal is but doesn't line up and so this is a way that they can um, share that information um, so they're clear on um, what their career goals are and the mentor is clear on that and then um, covid disrupted our spring workshop that we're going to hold in person on writing um, and evaluating job application diversity and inclusivity statements that are often required for job applications um, and then this fall, we'll start a peer mentoring program among the graduate students. Um, and then the next slide. Um, uh, in the spring, we offered um, uh, travel funds uh, to attend a conference. And uh, part of that stipulation was that uh, graduate students um, or faculty that attend that conference would have to participate in a, a URM uh, diversity or inclusivity program or event. Um, and then <clears throat> the other thing is uh, the recognition of activities for promoting diversity and mentoring um, have been uh, uh, included in uh, annual activity reports and um, promotion and tenure evaluation. And then um, just basically having a, a better um, although this seems small, students seem to really respond to it, um, emphasizing diversity and, and inclusion in departmental materials such as syllabi and the website. Um, and then updating our graduate program handbook. Um, this may seem minor, but a lot of the graduate students actually read the handbook and some of the faculty probably need to reread the handbook. Um, and it provides a lot of resources there for both the faculty and the graduate students um, and broader resources beyond our department. Um, and then the other one is to create informal uh, venues to really work on soft skills. Um, and we did this, uh, this part uh, this spring um, where we had a Friday afternoon discussion of just big ideas. And it was actually students from multiple uh, departments that attended and any, anyone could talk about their ideas, what their research was, there was no credits for the course, and it really went uh, well. 
And then the last one is, is that we hope to get some new information from the incoming cohort of fellows and incorporate that into our plan. So we view our plan as a living document that's going to change as we get input from students, other faculty, the college, and the university. Uh, Brad, thank you uh, very much. And um, if uh, to members of the um, participants in this program, if you have questions for Brad, um, we have time for one or two questions and or you could put them in the chat. Um, okay, you got really uh, wonderful array of elements um, in, in, that address the that address several different aspects of uh, departmental processes, communications, mentoring, and uh, recognition for diversity efforts. So thank you, Brad. So Marsha, this is Christine again. Um, so I'm wondering, will we be able to how will this information, I guess it's the same question I was asking before, how will this information be disseminated? I mean, I'm, very, I'm, I'm really interested in hearing the next presentations. And I know that I've been in pockets around campus where we have been talking about and struggling with these issues. Uh, and so I guess that's my general question. And so that's yeah. not a question for this particular presentation, but I'm really excited. I mean, you know, you and I have worked on this stuff for years, so I, I'm excited and I'm, I'm hoping that we'll be able to to get the word out and I'm not sure how that happens. So. Right, so, yeah, yeah. For, well, we can, we can use ideas and help with communication and promoting these ideas. For right now, um, all of the department plans are on the agepmc.org website and you can access them there. So you can, um, uh, uh, you can have the documentation of what it is that is um, has been described here, and uh, we have, I believe, you're you're on the monthly newsletter, so that's our primary right. means of getting information out. Yeah, okay. but um, as I said, we can really use um, ideas about how to disseminate this more broadly beyond the the newsletter audience is pretty big, but. Um, we need, we need more ideas about this. Yeah, it seems like, well, again, I don't want to get us too far off track, but it seems that, um, you know, there are entities, at least on our campus, and I know this is multiple campuses. My, my internet campus. connection is, uh, oh. so, sorry, my internet connection is very unstable and I miss Oh, it. okay. Can you, can you hear me, Marsh? So yeah. I, I know that this is more than just NC State campus. Um, so uh, I don't think I want to get too specific, but I'm, thinking, you know, the provost office, the department heads, the deans meetings and disseminating where I sit at the associate deans level in the college, um, this information disseminating down somehow through the ranks to get to the deans and then to the department heads and then to the faculty who are writing proposals and developing programs and mentoring students. I think that that's key beyond the newsletter. Um, so I, again, I'm excited about what the fellows are doing. And um, I, I'd love to see more people be pulled in or pushed into <laughs> learning more about what they're doing. So I'll stop. I'll probably okay. say the same thing in about two hours. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, let's have more conversations about this. Marsha, I have a, a general question. Yeah. Or a thought. So um, forgive me if I've overlooked um, this in the presentation, uh, but I was curious as to whether um, a requirement or uh, the departmental plans had anything to do with linking actions to outcomes. Um, I think I mentioned this in a previous discussion we had um, with the external advisory board, but I am consistently thinking about how each of these initiatives and projects and committees, where they lead to and how we are being intentional about assessing um, the outcomes of these things so that we don't, you know, kind of wrap ourselves up in uh, we're doing all these things and we think we're doing good because we're doing them mm -hmm. rather than we're doing these things and we know that they're effective because we've seen increases in X or we've seen people's, the climate has gotten better or we've seen an increase in students of color in the past two or three years. Like I'm wondering if that's 
uh, if that's not something that right works, yeah you know. so so there's a, a lot of um, ways to answer that uh, regarding the department plan specifically uh, we are asking all of the fellows to come back a year from now and report on uh, their uh, pro their mm, experience with implementing their plans and what their uh, progress has been a year from now. Um, regarding other progress, we have uh, lots of baseline data that we've taken from all of the participating departments before uh, this. So in the in the summer of 2018, regarding completion rates and um, uh, uh, representation in these departments and in other STEM departments. And then we also have some surveys that we do pre and post uh, participation of the fellows. So, and we'll be talking a little bit about some of those later this afternoon. So, so to Dominique's point, I think another place where you're going to see an impact, and it may be indirect, is where it shows up in faculty reporting. So I do reappoint my right. promotion and tenure for the College of Engineering. And when you see this stuff showing up in people's dossiers, then that's another level of dissemination and another level of engagement and implementation and application and all those other words. Um, that's also possibly measurable, although it may be anecdotal at first. Okay, great. Let oh yeah, hi Leslie. It's Leslie. Um, I just wanna build on um, Dominique's great question and Christine's great points to, um, so I'm coming at all of this as, you know, an external advisor, but also someone who leads um, evaluation capacity building for AGAP evaluators for another project, right, that you all are great participants in. Um, and I just want to keep kind of poking at the idea of how does all of this roll up. So um, the question Dominique's asking and the points that you're making, Christine, around communicating and disseminating these across one of the big things that AGEP is really interested in is not just what these interventions and these um, activities do at the different departments, but how they roll up and how you bring the um, successes of them to bear as a model together across the alliance. So just to keep pushing that and thinking a little bit about that as we roll through the day and then into your site visit on Monday. Great, okay, thank you. Well, I'm thrilled at all this discussion. Um, I think, let me see, we uh, have, uh, okay, what I'd like to do is call next on uh, Reza Gilati in chemistry to talk about the chemistry department plan. Yeah, so I'm particularly excited to present the um, diversity enhancement plan for the department of chemistry. Um, I think a little, little bit to Dominique and Christine's point, uh, the Department of Chemistry also wanted to have a structure in place so that we can assess and evaluate what are the benefits of our diversity enhancement plan and are they actually coming to fruition in terms of what we intended them um, uh, to be able to uh, do in terms of increasing the diversity, equity, and inclusion in our department. And one of the ways that we thought, at least as uh, providing a structure and accountability for our, our diversity enhancement plan, is the creation of a diversity, equity, and inclusion committee. And so this is going to be a broad-based committee in the department um, that is going to be composed of faculty, staff, postdocs, graduate students, and undergraduate students. And the role of the committee is to advise the head, the DGP, the DUP, and the department as a whole on a range of issues um, related to diversity, equity, and inclusivity. And we believe that by having an annual committee report, that's uh, potentially one of the ways that we'll be able to disseminate some of the activities that the committee is following through on that will be promoting our diversity enhancement plan. And so perhaps that's, um, says my internet connection is unstable, of course. Uh, that's one of the ways that we're going to be disseminating some of the information to the, to the broader community. Uh, the community will be focused on implementing this diversity enhancement plan because it's really a living document. We anticipate it changing over the course of the next several years 
as what we are doing evolves from the initial steps into the longer term steps. So generally this committee will be focused on faculty composition and hiring plans. Um, since it will be a larger committee, perhaps 15 to 20 individuals um, from those different constituencies, we believe that we would be able to have representation, for example, on every single hiring committee. A member of the, um, this committee will be on um, hiring committees. We will have um, a member of this committee on the Departmental Recruiting Commission Committee, the Departmental Admissions Committee, um, as members of the Graduate Curriculum and Undergraduate Curriculum Committees as well to ensure that best practices are integrated into um, our teaching uh, missions to provide an inclusive environment for all students. And we're going to have a SIMER and NRMN training over this winter break. We probably would have had it sooner, except COVID has impacted that at this time. So we think that this committee will be um, uh, providing the structure and the accountability for what we want to do, which are the concrete actions um, that are listed here. So for recruiting URM students, we're going to expand our efforts that we're doing right now. Um, to include recruiting booths at annual meetings at, for example, Nobuche and SACNEX. We'll direct fellowships to promote the recruitment of undergraduate, uh, sorry, underrepresented minority students. Um, and as DGP, I'll increase the regional departmental recruiting trips. I actually started a couple of these uh, back in February, but that got shut down because of, of COVID. Part of those recruiting trips, we have um, done this in the past and we're gonna um, uh, bring this back is to have not just faculty seminars, but sending our senior students out to their alma maters to recruit on behalf of the department. We have found that that has been effective um, in the past. We're also going to, um, we, we did this last year, we're gonna continue this uh, student peer mentors. So we create every year a diverse and inclusive and what we think is welcoming cohort of senior graduate students that will be assigned as peer mentors for our incoming graduate students to help, again, promote that sense of community that we are trying to aim for, um, not just in the Department of Chemistry, but what we have heard previously in, in earlier discussions. So if we can go to the next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Ah, there it is. Um, and so one of the, oh, nope, sorry, back one slide. <laughs> one of the things that we're also gonna do is we're going to um, revamp our Introduction to Graduate Studies class. That Introduction to Graduate Studies class will provide the initial professional development and training of our incoming uh, students uh, through a series of workshops. These workshops will include diversity and inclusion training, uh, resume and CV building, uh, LinkedIn networking, how to set up informational interviews with industry and the RTP, for example, um, career counseling, mentoring, and um, in particular creating and the annual review of individual development plans. And so the annual review of individual development plans uh, will also come about from uh, absconding a few of our graduate seminars our program weekly meetings so that we can have those as a continuing aspect of our uh, diversity enhancement plan. So we'll have incoming students uh, start with this existing course that we're going to do a revamp with, but then use our graduate seminar program to update our, uh, our CHEM IDPs, individual development plans that we're going to be using um, from the ACS website. And in the Last slide, the next slide. Uh, additional activities that we are going to be working on um, it are going to include a number of different um, uh, sort of focal points for, for example, advisor selection in the first semester. What we have found from some of our data is that many of our URM students fail to find faculty advisors in a timely fashion. And so as DGP, 
I'll be meeting with all of the first year students as part of our introduction to graduate studies class to ensure that each student is making the adequate progress needed in terms of finding an advisor selection. Uh, connecting our underrepresented minority students with opportunities, um, both that are already present on campus, and I think Dean Harry's alluded to some of those resources that we have that um, people, um, especially our students, don't quite know about, but also ACS resources, American Chemical Society resources that are out there, and then having um, better representation amongst our commencement and seminar speakers, uh, um, both providing our incoming and our continuing students with the opportunity to interact with our um, seminar speakers and commencement speakers in Q&A panels. So these are a few of the um, things, uh, components of our diversity enhancement plan that we're looking forward to implementing over the next year or so. so I'll turn it back to Marsha. Oh, great, thank you. Um, so uh, we have two more presentations to make. Um, so, so I'd like to call now on um, Prafula Regmi, and um, can we turn over the uh, uh, share, slide sharing to Prafula? And I'd like to ask Prafula to, um, you have about three minutes for your presentation. Great. Marcia, did you want to do Melanie's first and then go to the sharing? Um, yeah, th this is good. You got Prafula's up there. That's good. Yeah, so we'll do this one that's up here currently and I'll open the slide sharing up. Great, so Prafula, go ahead. Okay. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm Prafula uh, with Poultry Science Department. Our department head is Dr. Curtis, and then our graduate coordinator is Dr. Grimes. And um, so to give you a little background, uh, we are one of the smaller departments in terms of graduate students um, that was involved in this program. So we currently have only one um, URM doctoral student. And as a result of that, we had to rely on our climate survey among all our graduate students to identify uh, what were the challenges. And then we also did internal climate survey with the students and faculty, as well as the AGAP, uh, info, um, AGAP uh, climate survey. So based on the bottlenecks or challenges that we identified, our departmental diversity plan was developed accordingly. So most of the hindrances that our students faced were regarding uh, uh, limited professional skills. They didn't feel confident about public speaking or finishing up their dissertation in terms of writing. And again, since we had very small uh, sample of URM students, the, uh, these challenges seems to span across all graduate students. In our department, we have uh, mandatory biochemistry and statistics classes. And that was one of the uh, things that the students were uh, facing challenges with. And then the preliminary examinations. And during the uh, climate survey with the faculties, um, there were some concerns that some of the faculties didn't feel diversity is a priority or the strength. Um, and they were not uh, like more, only moderately confident in mentoring graduate students of URM background. So what we decided was, um, so what we decided uh, in our departmental plan was we, try to target in this first year, at least, um, by providing a workshop uh, with students, uh, for students uh, in terms of professional writing. Um, and then we have committed that this is going to be an annual uh, workshop, depending on what the students wants to do, uh, either on public speaking or uh, writing skills. And then we have made our preliminary examination criteria uh, flexible in terms of uh, the students are allowed to take one more chance if they fail in the first attempt and also consistent in terms of uh, being asked tangible questions by the committee related to their research. Um, so, and we're trying to put this in a graduate handbook, uh, working on putting together a graduate handbook so that uh, all of those criteria are written. Um, and then for the faculties, uh, at least once annually, we have committed to have a seminar presented on culturally responsive 
mentoring practices. Um, which, this could be on diversity and inclusivity, um, biased and mentoring, um, all of the things that we have talked through in the agri meeting. And then uh, since people might change, uh, people that are holding the uh, department chair or the G and, uh, DGP position might change. So we want to establish all of these as written policies in the department so that um, we can keep continuing with that. And one of the things that we have really benefited from in the past is the relationship with um, NCANT. So uh, we've recently put um, uh, faculties from NCANT as adjunct in our department so that um, sometimes one of the drawback was um, people that are skeptical about hiring URM students because they had never seen them or met them and not confident about their capabilities. So with this relation with NCANT, um, the students from there can come here for classes or seminars in the same way that our students can go there. Um, so I think this will be a one good thing that will keep happening in the future. And on the progress in this uh, year so far, so we've completed all the internal surveys and then we're using that information to re revise the graduate handbook uh, and uh, prelim examinations criteria. So there was discussion among faculties about diversity. And I had scheduled um, a high impact scientific writing training for grad students so that they could use some of this time during the um, uh, pandemic. Um, so it is an online uh, uh, workshop that they can complete at their own time and they can take few months to few weeks to go through different models. Uh, so in addition to the fund um, that uh, we're getting from AGAP program, uh, there was a buy-in from the department. So the, I think the cost was closer to around uh, $9,000. And then the department head has committed that she will uh, cover the rest of the cost uh, to make this happen for our students. But there were some challenges like the College of Science has not released the grant funding yet, and then we're still trying to work that out. Um, so the, these are the things with the poultry science that have been happening so far. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Prafula. And we have one, one more uh, presentation to make, and that will be from Melanie Simpson. Uh, from biochemistry. And uh, so Keith, if, yeah, there we go. So Melanie, are you here? I am. Great. I invite you to Tell us about your department's um, plan and, and progress. Thanks, Marcia. So I'm Melanie Simpson. I'm a professor and the department head of molecular and structural biochemistry. And so as a fellow, I've had um, a unique opportunity to really um, implement a number of the, the elements of our plan um, in real time as we've gone through developing it. Um, we've developed a rather comprehensive plan, and so I've focused on just a few key elements, but I'm happy to go into more detail if there's time for discussion. Our overall approach um, was really to be intentional about our development of a culture of inclusion and a climate for success. And in so doing, we identified three levels that, that would require our attention, um, faculty, doctoral students and the overall departmental culture. And so in this summary, um, I'll go through each of these briefly. Um, at the faculty level, um, a couple of bullet points. Our goal was to mentor and recognize success of a diverse faculty and to expect and assess inclusivity. Um, and so we've done a few things. One, we have um, used language in our recent faculty position advertisements that includes a, a statement of the importance of diversity for our department and for the college and the university. And we have also requested um, a one-page diversity statement from applicants. I charged each of our faculty search committees with considering all elements of the applications, including the diversity statement, and 
applicants who rose to the top but did not provide a diversity statement were asked to provide one before we would um, conduct an interview with those with those faculty. So their um, our faculty candidates have all come in with the expectation that they will uphold um, a, a, an attention to inclusivity. In addition, our early career faculty have a formal mentoring program and that includes guidance on uh, work life and position apportionment balance. And so this is particularly important for early career faculty and particularly er early career faculty with diverse backgrounds because they're often called upon um, disproportionately to contribute service and or teaching. And so this is intended to not only promote awareness among faculty, but also to protect early career faculty balance. And finally, um, our RPT rules, we have um, begun to, we modified our RPT rules formally and now expect documentation and assessment from each faculty member, early career and all uh, ranks, um, and documentation of their efforts to support diversity and inclusion. And we um, evaluate them as a departmental vote, voting faculty in conjunction with the other activities and realms. At the student level, um, for our students, we already had been using a graduate handbook. So we use a number of best practices for recruitment, retention, and training of students. The graduate handbook now has been revised so that it is very detailed, has expectations and milestones for students, and provides resources and contacts for them as um, first line uh, approaches. Our DGP also meets with each of the students more than twice per semester um, and as needed. There is, we have a peer mentoring program and a tutoring program as needed that every student is able to access. Um, each of the peer mentors is not just a buddy, but is also charged with holding an at least monthly meeting with their peer mentee. Um, and so in that way, the, the peer mentors have recognition and accountability for their efforts. We hold an annual orientation for our graduate students and in this one week program, we include intentionally uh, training in ethics, academic integrity. Um, we construct work with students, not just the first years, but also the, the students at more senior levels and our postdocs are invited to join as we construct individual development plans. And we also have discussions of imposter syndrome, microaggression, um, elements of diversity and inclusion in the culture intentionally as part of the orientation. Um, we have a new, newly revised and implemented core curriculum that is very structured. We have seminar series and journal clubs, um, opportunities for students to develop training in, in hypothesis development, proposal development, networking, um, and we partner with the graduate school to make sure that we also involve our students in programs like the Accelerate to Industry, um, commensurate with their, their professional interests. And finally, we have also begun now using rubrics that we developed um, as part of the orientation in conjunction with all of the students and at all ranks, and also with faculty input. The rubrics ensure consistency in annual progress evaluation and also in the comprehensive exam evaluations. And these are living documents that we revisit and revise annually. And then our final slide is on culture. And this, as you may imagine, is a more subtle and complex um, uh, hallmark to, um, to pursue and evaluate in an ongoing basis. But importantly, what we did, um, we had our academic program review last year and in our self-study process as a faculty and with input from students, we developed a five-year strategic plan and, and a chapter within the, the five-year plan was diversity inclusion focused. So we now are able to hold ourselves annually accountable to the action items that we developed for the strategic plan as a department. Um, this is a key element in our, in our ongoing sustainable plan for um, a culture of diversity and inclusion. We have also um, really increased our um, focus on 
celebrating our successes as a department, making it very public to our, the members of the department when someone passes comprehensives or publishes a paper, awards that are received or nominated. Um, we have a seminar committee that, is, that includes members of the faculty of all ranks and is a diverse committee, has a student representative, and they're charged with um, making sure that our annual um, seminar, external seminar um, schedule is diverse and represents a variety of um, speakers of all demographics. And finally, our, our departmental climate is now being assessed annually. We use, um, at every semester, um, we use tailored questions on student evaluations to assess diversity and inclusion in the classroom and their perception of it, as well as departmental climate surveys, surveys that were inspired from surveys done through this program. So I'll stop there. Okay. Thank you, Melanie. Um, and thank, uh, thank all of you. The plans are, uh, are really exciting. And um, I am very uh, confident that they will, um, as some, one of you said, that this will be a living document in your department and will um, have already generated and will generate more discussion and consideration among the faculty in your department and uh, building a really inclusive climate. Um, we are a bit over time, so I'm not going to ask for any questions right now. I'll turn this back over to Keith and um, we'll try to figure out a way. I understand that you can't put questions in the chat, so we'll try to figure out a way to, for you all to write questions as well as asking. Yeah, so um, thanks, Marcia. Um, 